Welcome to 2021. Today we're going to be discussing a review paper relating to nutrition recommendations for endurance athletes. It was published in 2019, so it contains very recent guidelines. Papers like these are extremely useful when bridging the ever so difficult gap between science and practice. This specific review is really good as it covers the most important nutritional topics relating to endurance athletes. Because of this, I plan to make bite-sized videos discussing each section separately. Today's focus is on carbohydrate recommendations. The review splits carbohydrate intake into three main categories, day-to-day -day eating, carbohydrate loading before a competition, and carbohydrate feeding during the competition or training. Carbohydrate for recovery, such as following a competition or long training sessions, I plan to cover in a separate video. Carbohydrates are the main source of energy for endurance activities, and because we have a limited store of carbohydrate in our body, daily replenishment is important, especially for athletes doing high volumes of training at moderate to high intensities. Therefore, based on the science thus far, it is recommended that exercising at moderate intensities for approximately one hour a day requires five to seven grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight per day. Most recreational and amateur athletes will fall into this category. For those that are training more and exercising at moderate to high intensities for one to three hours a day, these individuals are advised to consume six to 10 grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight per day. The International Society of Sports Nutrition Review updates are slightly more specific to this, so I'll also bring them up. They advise that athletes consume five to eight grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight per day when exercising two to three hours a day, five to six times a week. And for those top level athletes, training three to six hours a day, five to six days a week, be consuming eight to 10 grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight per day. And for ultra endurance athletes who arguably consume the most carbohydrate in a given day, are advised to consume up to eight to 12 grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight per day when they're doing around four to five hours of moderate to high intensity exercise each day of training. And these really are the upper levels of carbohydrate intake. On a more practical side of things, to calculate how much carbohydrate someone is recommended to have, measure their weight in kilograms and multiply it by the recommended daily carbohydrate intake range. For example, if we have a 70 kilogram adult that exercises approximately one hour a day, multiply 70 by five and 70 by seven to get your carbohydrate intake range. Once we get closer to the race day competition, carbohydrate loading or supercompensation is often used to maximize body carbohydrate stores, but it's important to know when to do this and how to do this and therefore we look at the guidelines for advice. For short races less than 90 minutes, glycogen depletion is less of a concern as body stores can usually handle the amount of carbohydrate needed for the competition. Therefore, for these shorter competitions, it is recommended that a simple topping off should be enough to replenish the carbohydrate lost in the day slash overnight fast before the competition. They advise a high carbohydrate diet of at least six grams of carbohydrate per kilogram and up to seven to 12 grams of carbohydrate per kilogram in the 24 hours before the event. For races longer than 90 minutes, carbohydrate stores do become a limiting factor to performance. So maximizing carbohydrate stores are advised. This is often called supercompensation or carbohydrate loading where an athlete will consume higher than usual amounts of carbohydrates in the preceding 36 to 48 hours before the start of the competition. They highlight that it was tradition to glycogen deplete yourself through intense exercise and then carbohydrate load before the competition. However, recent evidence has found this to be unnecessary and simply carbohydrate loading is sufficient. However, the paper does not provide specific recommendations to the amount of carbohydrate needed during this carbohydrate loading period. 
Therefore, if we look at the recent 2018 International Society of Sports Nutrition recommendations, they advise that two to three days before the competition, reducing your training volume by 30 to 50% and adding an additional 200 to 300 grams of carbohydrate to your daily intake is sufficient to supercompensate your carbohydrate stores and improve exercise capacity. Reducing your training volume before a competition is called tapering and the science behind this is very fascinating. I plan to make a video dedicated to what the most effective taper strategy looks like in another video. Once we are one to four hours before the start of the competition, it's also advised that a small top off of carbohydrate at one to four grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight is ingested and this should help replenish any carbohydrate lost in the body during the overnight fast. Similarly, the, anti Similarly, the International Society <laughs> Similarly, the International Society of Sports Nutrition state that even 30 to 60 minutes before the start of the competition, a light carbohydrate snack, for example 50 grams of carbohydrate, with a small amount of protein, such as 5 to 10 grams, can help improve performance and recovery. Again, practice is recommended as pre-exercise feeding can cause stomach distress in some people, which could be counterproductive. Which brings us on to the last topic, which is eating during the competition. The review highlights that shorter competitions, less than 60 minutes, no feeding is required during the event because body carbohydrate stores should be sufficient to fuel the exercise task. And as an additional note, uh, just a normal high carbohydrate diet should be able to take care of this. However, for these shorter duration events, they also bring up the technique called mouth rinsing, which is instead of actually ingesting carbohydrate, you simply swish it around in your mouth, such as in a carbohydrate drink for five to 10 seconds, and then spit it out. And they've actually found improvements in performance compared to a placebo or a control trial. Um, but I discussed this more in a separate video in more detail. So check out over there if you're interested in this. For events lasting longer than 60 minutes, carbohydrate intake can improve performance and delay or even prevent hitting the wall. And they split it up into two durations. For events lasting 1 to 2.5 hours, such as say, a half marathon, 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrate per hour is commonly recommended by several reviews. And the form they recommend it in is a 6 to 8% carbohydrate solution which you can find in typical commercial sports drinks. And they advise to consume this every 10 to 15 minutes. For longer events, more than 2.5 hours, high carbohydrate intakes of 60 to 70 grams per hour, and even now up to 90 grams per hour, if you can tolerate it, are associated with improved performance. And these higher intakes are stemmed from research looking at multiple transport carbohydrates such as glucose and fructose mixtures because they found you can ingest and oxidize multiple types of carbohydrates more than just consuming one type of carbohydrate such as glucose which can help improve performance. And on a practical note to end things off, practicing carbohydrate feeding strategies in training is extremely important. Some people can tolerate ingesting carbohydrate during exercise better than others, and it's always advised that people practice their pre-race and in-race nutrition strategies during training to see how they respond, and also whether the strategy they've planned is actually feasible and practical for the competition setting itself. So in summary, we've covered quite a lot, but fear not, because the following paragraph is one of the most useful I've come across so far with regards to evidence-based nutrition guidelines for endurance athletes. And even better, they've put it in a table format for easy interpretation. And this can kind of be seen as a blueprint for carbohydrate intake. So pause the video and study these, and we must give credit to the authors for putting this together. Um, very good paper very well written and easy to understand and bridging that fundamental gap between science and practice. Thank you very much for watching. 
If this has been of interest to you, I will be making videos on related topics as I discuss throughout the video. So stick around if you want to learn some more about what the science is getting up to.